Hey everybody, welcome back to Absolutely, I'm Dylan, that is Hassan, and today we are returning to talk about Superman and Lois Season 2, Episode 13. Uh, th this is the episode where not a whole ton happens. Um, I think the, the highlight of the episode is, is, uh, Superman no more powers, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know where they're going with that. I feel like this show constantly wants to kill Superman, but they know that, like, they shouldn't because he's <laughs> Superman. He's also um, our favorite Superman, maybe, yeah, of all time on screen. The best Superman. Literally. I, this episode was fine. I, it just yeah. seemed really average to me. And, Aggressively like, Allie so. was in it, so I didn't like that. <laughs> I will... You know what? I'm an honesty moment here, fans. Don't hate me for it. I skipped a lot of the Allie scenes. I started scrubbing through them. I couldn't watch it. It was really <laughs> boring. She's like, her... I, I skipped all the... A lot of the Allie, Lucy stuff. And mm -hmm. I will... And I knew I was going to go back and watch it later, and I will. It was just that, like, during the time I was watching it, I was like, I'm here for entertainment and not whatever this this D-list B-plot is. is. Yeah, right. I couldn't stand it. Um one scene that really stuck out to me before we started this review, I'd forgotten a little bit. I was like, Dylan, give me a recap. And the only thing that stuck out, Lana was so mean to Jordan. That was like horrendously mean. And I'm glad that she immediately was remorseful of it. And like, kind of was like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, why am I acting like this? Because Holy crap. You just, it's like, she just did a 180 and became Iris West. And I hated it. I got really <laughs> I don't think sad. It, was that bad. <laughs> it felt close to it, you know? And if you guys I, didn't you know, know Smallville's are, Lana, what I like about this show is that people are allowed to be very kind of upfront emotional and sort of get their feelings out. And then they sort of like, they check in and are like, Hey, did you really mean that? Or like you yeah. know, stuff like that. And, like, I like that out of that confrontation, Jordan didn't take the probably what would happen in the flash and be like, wow, your mom's so stupid and mean. We're going to date anyway. He was just like, he was just like, okay, that was the reality check I needed to yeah. realize that what I want is not good for Sarah. It's just good for me, which is like, hey, that's cool and surprisingly mature for a 16-year-old. <laughs> yeah. I could debate whether it is the thing that's right for Sarah, but, you know, it just... Sarah had her whole B storyline going on too with her dad and singing at the bar and, and Lana got really mad about that. Rightfully so when you think about it that like you took our daughter to where you met your mistress <laughs> to go to pound town. Like what are you doing? Um, but I'm glad they- bars are they, in Smallville though, to be fair. <laughs> right? Why? What, why is this place popping so much? Um, but yeah, hey, it's uh, they handled it well. I think they handled the Kyle Cushing stuff well. I hope they don't get back together because- it's a really good lesson of co-parenting and like existing in the same world. Cause lots of people, lots of parents aren't together, but they're wonderful and they like love each other from like a, you're a wonderful parent to my daughter. You're a wonderful parent to our daughter. Yeah. Like that's great. And I think that that's not often showcased on television. It's always like step parents are the villains and we really want mom and dad to get back together. It's like, no, Kyle ruined their marriage. There's no yeah. point where he can repair There's that. trust he, that's he no longer there. And it, that, and it won't be there, but she can know. love him. She can respect him. She can have sure. him as a good friend and have him be there as a co-parent and stuff. But we need to watch, we need to watch how we walk that line. Um, we also had an incredible flying sequence with Jordan yeah, and Clark. That is, that which, is one of the things I, I have in my notes is that I loved that whole training sequence with, with Superman and Jordan. I think that was, it was so cute. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> love that. It, it, there was a bit there where I was like, this is like bordering on Homelander and the boys a little bit because it seemed mm -hmm. like Superman was just like, come on, Jordan, you can do it. Yep. It's like, and then he flew. It was fine. Then he but if it wasn't, oh, no. <laughs> right. So and and I'll bring up the um, retcon. Jordan has full Kryptonian powers. He wasn't supposed to. Right. In season think, one, he goes to have he goes to jor -El, Right. And jor -El tests his body. And he said he'll he'll never be full Kryptonian. I don't think he was supposed oh, to have okay. more than just like super strength, the hearing and the vision. Mm. But I think this season they're like, no, he's Superman. Like he's Superboy, He can do it, which I think it's a good, it's a good idea. I was, I was confused as to why they didn't do that in the first place. I thought maybe initially it was going to be Jordan couldn't access all for Kryptonian powers. And then when Jonathan eventually, whenever that happens, gets his powers, he was going to have full Kryptonian powers. So they have that. And then maybe Jordan would develop like a different power. That's like kind of off kilter, not traditional. And that would be how they level each other out. But looks like Jordan is a full Kryptonian. I mean, he gave Otherworld Jonathan an ass whooping, and now he's flying and stuff. So I don't know. How'd you feel yeah. about that? Or did, does that come up as a retcon in your mind too? 
I didn't remember that at all. So yeah. <laughs> I know he's like he's got half Kryptonian blood, half human blood, or whatever. Yeah. But I didn't, I you know it it just suit because I just see him as Superboy. Uh, yeah. So it's like I expect him to eventually get full powers. Um, but I I don't know. The main thing that I took away from it is I don't really know where this show is going anymore. Because especially because of the like depowering Superman, like they could they could easily like throw all of that away at the end of the season and just be like, hey, yeah, that's Superman has his powers back, blah blah. blah. Now it's Superman and Superboy show, but it, it's weird because they keep kind of sidestepping stuff. Like last episode, uh, Natalie was like, hey, Jonathan, I made this suit for me, but I'm going to give it to you. And yeah. then now Natalie is wearing it. So like, are they going to share right. it or <laughs> I was so confused about that. They made like a whole little moment about that. And then for right. Jonathan to just not have it. But they also said, you guys got to step up after the superman thing happened or whatever so i think this right. might be like a moment where we have it's like the reign of the superman kind of jonathan hopefully will mm -hmm. get a version of powers or get something we have the two steels and we have superboy kind of fun we're doing our own little version of the reign of superman like to back up the world when they're when they're gone i don't remember did they kill talro i don't think they did no he's fine no. he's I fine think. good he got he got his soul sucked a little bit um yeah but yeah, I uh, they they tee up a lot of stuff. I agree that this season has lacked interesting direction. I thought Bizarro was a weird place to go, and that when this show eventually builds to their Zod, I think that's going to be incredible because this show has has all the emotional stakes to make that really cool. I think they keep Talro alive. This is fan theory or fan want keep the keep Talro alive, make him and Superman slowly get closer and closer and closer. Have your Zod storyline. Zod shows up, snaps Talro's neck. Mm. immediately and that tees up this new zod kryptonian whatever war but let's do that season four but uh, until then where we're at now i don't like ali i don't care about ali nope. the actress who plays lucy was better on supergirl as lucy lane than she is on yeah this show i noticed she's kind of rough in this too i don't know like what was really going on. really rough because she was good on supergirl she was funny she was quick she looks really different which is interesting to me because it's the same actress, but she looks very different to me. Um, but yeah, it feels like she doesn't know how to act anymore. Because <laughs> um, everyone else, I think it's because, and it might just be because everyone else is firing at all cylinders. You have the child yeah. actors like, you know, Jordan's a little bad when he gets mopey, but when he's Superboy, when he gets those moments of joy or when he's with Jonathan, the kid's a masterclass actor already, you know? Like they're killing they're it. definitely so not, I wouldn't call them child actors. They're all no. like our age. <laughs> Just a they're younger, younger than us. I think they're teenagers. I think they're all like 17, 16. I think jo the, the actor movie. Alex Garfin, who plays Jordan Kent, is the youngest. He was born in 2003. But the rest was of them are are like 20-ish. Really? Okay. Let me see. Then I'm wrong. Yeah, Jordan I know Jordan is young. Was born in 2001. And then Indy Navarrete was born in also 2001. So. Okay, yeah. So they're 20. I get it. Yeah. Then maybe I'm giving too much. I'm giving them yeah, too much. Child room. actor is like the well, girl in Obi Wan, <laughs> who plays little Leia. Child actor is the girl who plays Sarah's little sister, who is just perpetually yes. the worst, <laughs> and never shows up <laughs> mm -hmm. because they forget she exists. Don't worry, she shows up to then stop Lana from uh, easily saving the show by telling Sarah about Jordan's powers. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. She it, we had that had that moment of coming in, but. You know, not a lot happened this episode. I, you know, Clark has lost his powers in every media medium he's ever been in mm -hmm. for an episode or two, every TV show right. he's ever done. It's inevitable. So I'm down to see what that episode looks like. I hope we get Jordan training sequence. I don't know. Are you ready for Jonathan to have his powers yet? Or do you think it's got to be a big bombastic moment? How are you feeling I think about it would have. I think I thought it was going to happen by now. I'm just, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm. I do think your idea of this being kind of a reign of the Superman thing is interesting, but like that was only, that was only interesting because every, there, we were trying to find a new Superman and it was all these characters that we hadn't seen before kind mm -hmm. of, and there was a lot of mystery there and like, yeah. maybe it could be cool where like the Superman is gone. So now all of these people have to pick up the slack, but the people we have are Jonathan who has no powers, Jordan who uh just does superhero stuff in a hoodie and doesn't really know what he's doing and then uh doom guy and doom girl <laughs> don't look that great and their villain is white lady so like i 
I don't know. It doesn't seem that interesting. Sounds like to the me. society we live in. No, <laughs> <laughs> their, their villain um, is white lady. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I will say another weird thing about this episode. I don't. I don't know if it was this episode in particular, or maybe it was just because there wasn't a lot going on. But I feel like this was one of the first times in a while that I noticed not liking the the cinematography and the color grading of this show. And I don't yeah. know if it was this episode in particular. Or if I was it's, just bored, so I noticed it. <laughs> it's this episode. It looks like they color graded different episode to episode. Every one. So they have like a base tone that is very like washed out and neutral. It's always drab. But I think they just up the vibrancy when Superman's on screen. Or at least that's mm. what they were doing. But now I think because they're doing that whole thing where he's like sucking the color out of them, I guess. Like it's like, the, like you know, like when she's doing the suck thing, like color seems sure. to be seeping out of their skin. That was a weird way to say it. I acknowledge that. Okay, guys, I'm going to read the <laughs> comments later and it's just going to be that. But <laughs> I, uh, I think they're just doing like, like, especially I don't like when um, I'm trying to, the way that I feel the, the, I'm trying to think of a good way to describe this. It's like you ever, you ever in like a house during a hot summer day, you live in Alabama. Yeah. You ever, you're in like a house on a hot summer day and maybe the AC is not working and the windows are open mm -hmm. and it's like hot and sweaty. That's what the cinematography of this episode felt like to me. What a, what a beautiful way to put that. I agree. I completely agree. That's okay, exactly cool. what that felt like. <laughs> yeah. The, the color grading has always kind of been like, um, kind of like you were saying, kind of flat and, and washed out. And, and I, I know this, like, especially because whenever I make thumbnails for, for these discussions, I have to recolor grade the screenshots that I take of the episode because they look <laughs> awful as thumbnails. I have to put color back into them, which is oh, so weird no. for a Superman show. But it is. Feels like it should be so vibrant. It feels like they're grading it as if they were in Metropolis, but Smallville tradition, like, Smallville, the show was so bright and colorful. Yeah. They should, Very, like, they daytime should TV. latch on to that at some point. It was such daytime TV. <laughs> it sucked. I love it. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. There's, there, I don't think there's a lot more else to say about this episode. The past few episodes have kind of just been, um, kind of, kind of feels like network symptoms of just, we have a certain amount of episodes we need to fill. So let's spin our wheels for a bit. And that's, that's definitely what this episode felt like. So, but now we have a status quo change. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Fingers Any crossed. Thoughts? Goes. I like the show, guys. Uh, you know, you know how it is. It's not. Uh, if you guys notice, Flash hasn't been on the channel for a little bit. It's because I'm gonna watch. For it. <laughs> I couldn't watch them week to week. I have to watch them in one sitting so I can't suffer anymore. But we'll get back to you on the finale for that one. But Superman and Lois firing in all cylinders doesn't feel like a CW show. It feels like an HBO Max show. I wish it would feel like a step up above that, and then it would be perfect because we have the best Superman we've ever had on screen. We probably have the best supporting cast for Superman we've ever could have imagined. You know, like one person who's kind of powered family members to protect, but also are more than capable of holding their own and holding their own storyline. So, you know, it's to be determined of whether the show can really stick the landing because so far it's been doing okay. The last two episodes have been treading water and I'd like for them to get back to swimming the way that they were for a while. So we'll, we'll have to see. Totally. Couldn't have said it better myself. I, I like <laughs> this show. Hope it gets back on speed soon. Other than that, this has been Absolutely. I'm Dylan. That's Hustin. We'll catch y'all next time for Superman and Lois episode 14. Peace out, guys.